Hello, welcome to my channel. I want to show you my portrait of Sean Connery, a great actor who passed away recently. In one of my previous videos I said that I was going to do another drawing of him, and here it is. It was done in charcoal, and I'm going to take you through the drawing process. Let's have a look. This, I think, is the third drawing of Sean Connery I ever did. The first two were done mostly in graphite, I think, or actually the first one was a regular portrait done in graphite, and the second one was a combination of a graphite pencil and a black colored pencil. This one was done mostly in charcoal. And the first two drawings were of him as James Bond, but for this third one I decided to do a drawing of him in, in a in an older age. I thought that this uh, reference photo was pretty good for a uh, portrait. There were some things that I couldn't really make out in it but overall I thought that it was a pretty good pretty good picture uh, for reference. Anyway, uh, I'm going to be using, using the usual stuff. The size of the paper is about 9 times 12 inches I'm using a uh, smooth paper which is about 190 GSM in terms of weight and, weight and thickness. For sketching and some of the details I used a graphite pencil and also a touch of black colored pencil. But for most of the drawing process I will be using charcoal pencils and vine charcoal. Here I sharpened one of my charcoal pencils to create some charcoal powder and then I started spreading that around with my finger. Your finger is actually a great blending tool if you don't care too much about precision. But the thing is that it allows you to cover large areas very quickly and it also pushes the charcoal and makes it stick um, to the surface of the paper, so it allows you to create large dark areas. Now here I use the charcoal residue from a medium charcoal pencil, which means that it's not the darkest thing that I have. But I don't want the background to be pitch black. I want it to be dark, but not completely black. And later you'll see why. Anyway, here I'm moving on to some of the details and I'm drawing uh, the eyes and the pupils. There's going to be a nice reflection in the eye and I'm going to... In my reference photo the reflection was almost covering the entire pupil so I decided to move it just a little bit to the side. Occasionally people ask me how I do the initial sketch. I prefer tracing. Some people don't like tracing because they consider that cheating. Uh, it's not really cheating, it's just a quicker way of getting the basic proportions right. So you can also measure. I mean, in a way measuring is also a form of cheating if you want to call it that. Uh, because you're using a way to establish exact proportions without actually using freehand and eyeballing. But the thing is that I only use tracing for some of the basic distances to establish some of the basic distances and shapes and then I move on using freehand and I just do a more elaborate sketch. And I prefer to use freehand as much as possible, it's just that um, to establish some of the main distances such as for example the width of the eyes and the face and the, the distance between the ears and things like that it's a good thing to either trace or measure. Some people also like to use the grid system which has its advantages but also some disadvantages. It's not really uh, suitable for my style of drawing because I like to be all over the place and uh, people who draw using a grid method they usually uh, work from one segment to the next they move from one segment to the to the next that's not how I work I like to work 
uh, all over the place and that kind of helps me modify things as I go along and it helps me gauge how much value I need in different parts of the drawing. Anyway, um, I'm establishing some of the darker values on the shadow side of the face and I'm using a combination of compressed charcoal from my charcoal pencils and vine charcoal. The vine charcoal is that tiny stick or uh, thin stick that you see that I'm using occasionally. And now uh, another important thing that I have to explain here is that his hair is gray or largely gray even though his eyebrows are still pretty dark. Um, so his hair and his beard is mostly gray or white and even though it's a very light color or light tone it needs to be dark here because it's in the shadow. So even objects that are white in terms of color will appear a lot darker uh, when they're in the shadow and that's why you need to make sure that you have enough value. So you can see how much darker the left side of the face and the left side of the head is right now in comparison to the rest of the to the rest of the head. And that's because that's going to be the shadow side. Well, it's going to be a slightly darker side than the than the right one. But because I need to establish the contrast between the gray hair and the background, I decided to do a little bit more of the background. So right now I'm back to working on the uh, eye sockets and shading around the eyes. And he also has quite a few of these wrinkles around the eyes. There's not too much detail visible in the ear. I'm just going to put in these darker areas and some of the hair is going to be going over the ear here. I'm blending that with a tutillion and with brushes. And now I'm going to try to put in some more detail into this hair. So I'm putting in some darker areas where the roots of the hair are and in the hair itself trying to break it into break it into segments and right now it doesn't look uh, super realistic but I'm just putting in these darker areas because um, because I want to create more depth in the hair I can't, make, can't uh, let it look too flat that's the difference between, uh, for example, drawing larger portraits and smaller portraits. When you're drawing a smaller portrait, uh, like for example, uh, you're making it look like you're looking at a person at a distance, there will naturally be fewer details and less contrast and texture. And when you are doing a close-up, you have to draw a lot more of those details and the hair also needs to be a lot more complex. So I need to be able to show some details and some segments of hair and uh, some depth in between these segments. And that's why I'm putting in these uh, darker areas so that I can have some contrast between the lighter and darker areas, even within the hair itself. I'm covering the rest of the forehead with the vine charcoal and using a little bit of charcoal powder from my charcoal pencils on top in some of the darker areas. Occasionally, uh, I will have some traces of my fingers, fingertips, here and there, because they're kind of oily and uh, they will leave these smears that charcoal will show when you start blending it, but I can easily remove those with an eraser and then blend over them. So here I did a little bit more of the background and it appears that my paper has some... Um, unwanted horizontal texture. You can see these lines that are appearing for some reason. So this batch of paper that I'm using, some of the some of the paper 
does that and some of it does not and um, I don't really like that effect and I'm going to have to remove it a little bit later by making it smoother and more even because I don't want to leave those lines there anyway right now I'm just uh, working a little bit more on that hair on the left and adding some hairs using a uh, pencil eraser so right now these are a little bit too light and a little bit too defined but I'm going to subdue them a little bit with uh, brushes because I don't really want that much contrast and detail here another important thing is that I keep that uh, the, the amount of value on that uh, left side of the head because it's in the shadow so I can't make the hair or the hairs too light I can make a few hairs here and there a little bit lighter like they're kind of sticking out and getting more light but that's about it the whole hair and the whole left side of the head and the face needs to be a little bit darker overall so I need to keep that in mind otherwise uh, my my portrait will not look very realistic so right now I'm still trying to see how much contrast I need in this area and how much detail I want to put in into these uh, into the hair here on the left I want to achieve that look like he's balding like he has receding hair uh, with just a few hairs on top but he also has uh, slightly more hair down uh, where the sideburns are so he has some some sort of sideburn, sideburns I guess so I'm gonna have to make the hair there a little bit longer so I'm still fidgeting a little bit uh, with the hair here trying to make sense of it um, the main the main reason why I'm spending so much time here is not so much uh, because I'm worried about the texture but because I'm worried about the amount of value so I'm deliberately allowing my pencil to get dirty so that I that the lines that I'm creating are not too clean and so, th so that I'm not creating lines that are too white and that have too much contrast because like I said and this is very important I want the whole left side to be the shadow side here I zoomed in a little bit again uh, where I'm going to draw a few more of these flyaway hairs at the top and I'm also going to do a little bit more work on this for it adding some more eyelashes and some other details but I'm going to add some of these uh, wrinkles on the forehead and I'm adding some more texture and kind of uh, trying to make the, the the overall transition from from lighter to darker areas on the forehead uh, make a little bit more sense where the lighter area is a little bit more to the right side and now I'm shading each of these individual individual um, skin folds or wrinkles so that they would look more three-dimensional so with realistic portraits it's all about achieving 3d look or it's all about achieving depth or the feeling of depth and the way we do that is by increasing the range of value because if I were to shade everything with the same value it would look flat or if I were just to draw the lines it would still look flat it would look like a cartoon but when you shade around these lines and you establish lighter and darker uh, values the range of value is showing us depth and volume in our subject I've already talked about these concepts many many times before but 
I covered most of them very thoroughly in my Charcoal Basics series, which I highly recommend if you want to learn how to draw in charcoal. I myself am a self-taught artist, but I think that the little amount of experience that I have can still be useful to some of the beginners. I started talking about my tools, so these are woodless charcoal pencils that I'm using. Uh, they're Warrison woodless charcoal pencils, I believe it's a Chinese brand. I mean you can use any brand, uh, it's just that I'm using these woodless ones because they're easier to sharpen and I use two grades, the medium one and the soft one usually, because mm, the soft ones are a little bit darker and they provide me with the extra range of value that I need to create more depth. So you can see now that as I'm shading the subject, the background doesn't appear quite as dark as it did initially. And I don't want the background to be too dark so that it kind of swallows up the subject and so that it makes the subject look too flat. Because there are a lot of lighter areas of lighter value in my subject which would get kind of overwhelmed by the darkness of the background and they would end up looking a little bit too flat. The thing is that when you shade an area very lightly if you put down a very dark area next to it it will look like it hasn't been shaded at all. It will look uh, completely white. So now you can also see uh, what I mean by going all over the place. I skip from one part of the portrait to another even though generally I tend to work from left to right and from top to bottom but I often skip ahead shading some other areas and then going back to back to them later because I like to be able to give myself some idea about how much value I need in different parts of the face. And right now I'm just refining some of the details around the eyebrows and around these wrinkles around the eyes, in the corners of the eyes, and around the temples. And that weird texture, that lines that I saw in the background when I started covering the background, I kind of softened that up a little bit, even though some of them are still visible, so I'm going to have to work on that a little bit more but I'll get to that later. Um, I shaded the area up to the shoulders and the neck here at this point I wasn't really sure what I was going to do with the shirt because not much of it is visible in my reference photo but I just uh, covered it with some charcoal and decided to move on to the to the rest of the face and the neck so the uh, the portrait is progressing nicely but as you can see I still have to tackle the mustache and the beard and there's going to be a few challenges there and I'm going to talk about that in a few minutes so he has these uh, he has a very interesting looking jaw muscles here and some nice dimples And there's also a bit of shadow coming from the right to the left. And obviously that shadow under the chin is going to make the the beard look stand out even more. So right now I'm just carelessly 
shading the neck. I'm going to make that a little bit smoother and fix the texture as well as the amount of value a bit later. No need to worry about it too much right now. I'm mostly worried about, uh, worried about the proper amount of value. And these lines that I'm annoyed by are still appearing here and there as I'm working uh, because the, because I'm damaging the paper and some parts of the uh, of that paper are obviously starting to show some of these lines that I don't like. This paper is not of the greatest quality. I'm not gonna lie, but it's worked pretty well for me so far. So I'll be able to clean up these lines eventually. And I think the port portrait will end up looking good. It's just that it's an unnecessary distraction at this point. When I'm tr still uh, struggling with achieving likeness and shading the face properly. As you can see, I'm doing a bit of shading with a black colored pencil as well. I mostly use it for some finer details, but 95% uh, of the drawing process here is done with either charcoal pencils or vine charcoal. But as I've already explained in many of my previous videos, I have no problem combining either graphite or a black colored pencil with charcoal. and. Uh, I think you can only benefit from combining these two different types of media. So I'm doing a bit more shading on the nose and there's going to be a nice highlight on the tip of the nose but in order for that highlight to stand out better you need to shade the whole nose and then maybe erase the highlight later that way you can create more contrast but right now I'm working around the eye on the right and I did the same thing with the highlight that I did on the left eye I moved the refle that reflection that highlight ever so, ever so slightly to one side so that more of the pupil would be visible. I normally do that so that I can create more contrast between the pupil and the rest of the iris and of course the reflection or the highlight. And once again I've talked about this as well in many of my videos. In order for the highlight to stand out you have to shade the entire eyeball including the white area because the the eye is a round object so so the corners of the eyes will normally be a little bit darker and getting lighter and lighter towards the towards the reflection except for the fact that in the middle of the eye you also have the iris and the pupil uh, I don't want to get too much into anatomy some of the some of these things are pretty straightforward all you have to do is check out your reference photo and you don't really need to understand the anatomy that well although it helps to know the anatomy anyway doing some more shading on the nose because I wasn't really happy with this transition between the forehead and the eyebrows and the nose that area tends to be very very important when capturing capturing the likeness of a person And I'm also using my pencil eraser to uh, go over some of these wrinkles and some of these uh, lighter areas around the eyes and the nose. Uh, basically trying to make everything look more three-dimensional by increasing the range of value. You can also see that I'm using a black colored pencil. Uh, the pencil that I have in my pencil holder that I used just a few seconds ago, that, that's a black colored pencil and I use that for some of the tiny details like wrinkles and some of the finer textures. Here I'm going to move on to the mouth and the mustache and the lips of course. So 
So I shaded the upper lip first and the mustache is a little bit tricky because um, the, the thing is that both the mustache and the beard can sometimes distort the facial features a little bit and they can also um, throw you off in terms of your understanding of the shape of those features. Oh, and by the way, here I used a pointed stick to create some indentations so that I could uh, create uh, an appearance of white beard. This is a technique that I used in many of my previous videos. So I just use a stick and I create some lines and when I go over them with, a, with charcoal, uh, the white lines start to show up. So it's it's a regular pointed stick. You can use any other tool that can produce a small invisible indentation. Naturally you can also draw beard by using an eraser but I find that with when you're using a pointed stick and go over that with charcoal you tend to create white lines which have clean edges and that combined with a regular eraser can achieve a really nice realistic appearance of a beard and if you feel like you need even more details on that beard you can also use a white gel pen here and there uh, normally or some people also tend to use gouache and normally I don't recommend using a white gel pen on top of most uh, types of pencils, especially graphite pencil, because I don't think it really looks uh, that good, especially in real life. But for some reason, it tends to combine pretty well with charcoal. So if you if you use it sparingly, it can actually work. So there are many different ways you can draw white beard. But right now, the whole beard and the lower lip area and the chin area looks kind of flat. But that's okay, I'm going to go back to that later. Right now I'm just adding a little more value to the shirt on the, on the right. And now I'm adding a little bit, a little bit more shadow under this lower lip so that the mouth can finally start to take shape. So going back to these, uh, to the mustache, uh, the thing is that I need to create a sufficient amount of contrast for the mustache to stand out against uh, the rest of the face and the upper lip area. But at the same time you can see that because the beard is grey or white, there will also be some lighter hairs in, within the mustache itself. And of course, I need enough value for these lighter hairs to show up, so contrast is very important. That's why I have to go over the lighter hairs or, or these indentations with enough charcoal. But late, later I can refine their shape and appearance and density using my eraser. So, here I'm still working on the lips and the area around the mouth. The left side of the face, or his right side, is still unfinished. It still needs a little bit more shading. So, when I was choosing a reference photo for this portrait I had a nice I had a nice photo of Sean Connery as James Bond but I thought I already did two drawings of James Bond so maybe I should do one of him as an older man and this is the one that I chose I found this one on Pinterest I think and I really like the lighting and the resolution was good enough so I thought that it would be good for a nice portrait 
but I had to add add a few details in like the top of the head and the lower part of the shirt I mean the collar and the the area below the neck so here I'm using that pencil eraser to do a little bit more work on the beard and naturally I'm going to be making modifications to it because what often happens is that um, the beard sometimes ends up looking too flat or maybe there's too much of it or, and I need to kind of step back from my drawing and um, check if um, if the larger areas of shadow are big enough or if the proportions are looking good I mean with larger more complex portraits it's natural if you don't get things right the first time so you can always make some adjustments a little bit later here I'm also adding a little bit more shadow uh, under those white hairs so that they can stand out even more and doing some more work on the eyebrows and there are some parts of the of the portrait where you need a little bit less texture like for example on the forehead and on the neck so it's a good idea to go over that with a brush and soften the texture a little bit to blend it a bit more. Here I'm sort of adding a few more of these flyaway hairs around the sideburns on the right and just defining the ear on the right and doing the same thing on the left side as well and drawing a few more of these flyaway hairs on top and on the sides So at this point I wasn't really sure what to do with the shirt yet. I'm still working on this shadow uh, on the neck and on the left side of the face. Just making some final adjustments on the face. And cleaning up some of these edges around the cheeks as well as the as well as that beard. Here I decided to make a few adjustments on the mustache because I thought they looked too big and they kind of turned the mouth into a larger smirk than I expected. And I also added a few more touches of darker value on the sides of the head as well. So these were some of the final adjustments I made to the face and the head itself. And I also kind of short, shortened the beard in these areas and added a little bit more shadow because I realized that mm, the face appeared a little bit too long because of the beard. So I needed to make a few adjustments there. And there, there was a little bit more shadow on, on my reference photo in that lower left area. And I also cleaned up the area here on the nose because I didn't really like the shape of the nose. So I modified the shape a little bit. And I also did a little bit of work around the eyes. But those were just some of the final adjustments. The thing is that sometimes you need very little work to fix your portrait sometimes you, if you look at your portrait you can look way off but all you need is a, just a few tiny adjustments so in, at this stage I was just making those final adjustments just to make sure that the proportions are looking good and that the, that the larger areas of shadow are in place and that they're big enough.
just a few adjustments around the eyes and the eyelashes because he has fairly long eyelashes and also here around the cheeks so I added a bit more shadow on the neck and on the sides of the head and at this point I decided to do something about the background and the shirt so first I made the background a little bit smoother and a little bit lighter in some of these areas and then I decided to make the shirt darker in this area here because the the head and the neck is casting a little bit of shadow on this part of the shirt so it needs to be darker than the background so I used some soft charcoal for that and my footage here is a little bit blurrier I don't know whether it's because I sped up the footage or because the camera went out to focus I'm not really sure but I think you can still see most of the details so here I decided to make this area a little bit darker and in my reference photo I think he was crossing his arms or something I, I don't really know what he was doing but I couldn't really make out all of the folds in the shirt and um, how the collar was positioned so I need, needed to simplify things a little bit I created enough contrast around the shoulders so that his um, figure, his shoulders and his portrait can stand out against the background and then I simply kind of simplified the collar and the shirt a little bit just enough to make some indications of some folds around that collar and around the shoulders of the of the shirt and that was just about enough that I uh, wanted to do with that because I didn't want, really want to spend too much time playing around with the clothes and uh, the rest of the time I spent mostly cleaning up these edges around the ears, around the neck and some other parts of the portrait and maybe making just a few adjustments here and there and finally I decided to sign the portrait in the lower right corner and that was it so this is a slightly larger portrait because the face is covering most of the paper but it, the, the paper itself is only 9 times 12 inches in size so not a super large portrait I hope you enjoyed the drawing process don't forget to check out my other videos and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already if you want to see longer videos you can always go and check out my Patreon Thank you for watching once again and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.